feel so lonely Come with me and let me show There are others just like you Who feel the powers of earth, sea and sky Of dragon and fairy and shades of the night Hear the call of our ancestors of blood and bone of womb and tomb and standing stone Lady, stir your cauldron well Chant your words and sing your spell Merry Meet YouTubers, this is Lady Grave Dancer. I hope that y'all can see me well. I don't have it zoomed in because I have Sarah here with me today. And Sarah is one of my spirited dolls that I have in the house. She was not spirited when I bought her. She was bought for just for decoration purposes only. And she became spirited, I want to say, a month or so after we purchased her. I named her Sarah because that was the name that came to me after she became spirited. Um, this video, you're going to hear a lot of noise in the background. i got my kids in there playing their game laughing. And then the TV is going over there. and It's a busy house. It's always busy. So um, this is part two to my... Um, I called it, I titled it Haunted Dolls. I call them spirit dolls. My kids are so loud, y'all. I hope we can get through this video. Um, <laughs> but that's how it is in my house. Uh, this is part two to the first one because there was so many questions that went along with that video that I wanted to add another video and I needed another video for this month anyway. So I thought that would be perfect. Now, again, this is Sarah. And uh, she was willing to come on camera. She's really not shy or bashful of anything. She's the one that allows everybody to see her move. If you've been to my house, you've seen her move. She changes the expressions on her face. She turns her eyes to look at whatever direction you're at. Which is crazy because you're looking at her and her face is plastic. So it's like, how does she do that? I have no idea. I'm not a spirited doll, so I can't answer that question. But I thought it would be fun having her here. This is her little pet poodle. <laughs> when I, oh, let me tell you a story. When I first brought her into here, into this room, I don't bring her in here much because her and Beth don't really like being in the same room together. So she's never really been in this room. Um, at least not in her doll. Um, spirits can travel to wherever they want to go, but just in her doll. She hasn't been, and when I first brought her in here, I had her standing up here, and I was kind of fixing her hair so you could see her pretty face, and the dog started barking because I guess they've never seen her out from her, sp her space over there, and she looks quite a bit taller when she's not over there. And one of the dogs, the smallest one, Tucker, he started barking so hysterically, and it looked like someone grabbed him by his mouth and pulled his face back into like this smile and then his tongue just came out and he just started coughing and he ran out but he came back to bark some more when I told her to stop don't do that it didn't hurt him but it was definitely a way I think that she was telling him uh, start barking at me you know who I am now I would never have a spirit in the house that would cause harm to any of the animals or the people here and I don't think that's what she was doing but she was proving a point for him to stop barking at her and it was kind of funny because I've seen the other dog laying there and now I know who's doing it uh, Rusko our uh, terrier he's been laying there before and then all of a sudden his whole face will go up into a smile like if somebody's holding his face up in a smile and he's just staring and it's the creepiest thing I've ever seen and I, I always tell him stop doing that I always thought maybe he had some kind of a twitch and then both sides of his face would go up into a smile and we've seen it before and it's just creepy to see this smile on his face and now I think I know where it comes from <laughs> yeah so anyways I wanted to um, just go over a few things a few questions that was asked of me in the first video and I thought it would be perfect to make a part two to this video the question that I was asked was how can you tell if a um, doll is spirited and I just that it's, it's a hard one to answer because I hear them and I talk to them. Now, anybody who's been around Sarah knows she's spirited because, again, she's never been one that was quiet. I mean, not quiet, but didn't move around people. She always moved around people. And um, so that's a giveaway. It's spirited. It's moving. 
but you, you really have to I guess be in touch with your energy and feel it you, you God, it's so hard to explain because if you don't then I don't know how you'll ever know if a doll is spirited or not um, I, I have a theory that dolls become spirited because they symbolize their human life but I do believe that items can be haunted I do believe that things can be haunted not just dolls I've had haunted items before I have a rocking chair that's spirited and it rocks on its own and we've had this my mom had it and I'm not sure how far back it goes um, but now it sits outside and we all use it we've always used it but because it rocks on its own it nobody wanted it in any other rooms because it was just creepy for them so it sits outside now and it, it rocks when it wants to rock now again how do you know something is spirited? Obviously, if it's moving on its own or relocating itself or talking to you, then obviously it's spirited. Other than that, if you're starting to get a gut feeling that one of your items have spiritual activity to it, then that's probably the best way to start. And you can either start by communicating with it or cleaning it and getting rid of whatever spirit is there. I feel like she's just here to mad dog, y'all. I really feel like that's the only reason why she's here right now, why she agreed to coming on camera. <laughs> it's just to, just to, um, yeah. Either that or she's just uncomfortable being in the same space with um, Beth. I don't know why they don't get along, but they don't. And then I was asked also about the doll that I gave to Trina, the little boy doll that would mess with my husband. He was uncomfortable with him being here. I wasn't uncomfortable with the spirit, but I'll tell you how I came across this doll. I was at the thrift store, because I love to go to thrift stores, and um, there was this doll with broken fingers, and I don't think he had his shoe. I can't remember. But we knew that he was spirited. We'd seen him there, and then we just kind of... Like, no, and he's a big one. He's not a little doll. He's a pretty good sized doll. And we're like, no, but then it was almost as if um, we could hear him almost pleading with us to take him and we from the other side of the store. And then we went back over to where he was and we had seen this like big biker looking guy, which I'm not bashing bikers because, of, you know, I'm not saying that. That's what he looked like. Um over there with another woman and the way that they were it's like they knew that the doll was spirited as well and the doll the spirit that was in the in the doll was scared of them and so I got to the doll first I picked him up put him in my buggy and then we bought him and you could just tell he was just so relieved that he was coming home with me now we would keep him in the living room on the sofa Um, yeah, we'd keep him on the sofa. Sorry, I'm getting messages on my phone, so I keep looking away. We'd keep him on the sofa, and for whatever reason, wherever my husband would sit, the doll would end up behind him. No matter where we located him at, he would end up there, and he would always kick him. Either kick him or pull his hair. And at first I just thought he was just being paranoid about it, but then once I'm actually seeing him get kicked... So I was like, okay, for whatever reason, you and this the spirit that's in this doll are, I think it was playful, but my husband didn't like it. And uh, we had one of the neighborhood kids come into the house, which is rare because most people don't come over here. And he came in and he sat down and he told me that I need to move the doll. So I knew that the doll was mischievous and needed to um, go to a home that would be as caring and I knew Trina had another little boy doll that was spirited and was mischievous as well so I thought they would get along really well together and just give some mischief <laughs> over to Trina's house so I sent the mischief to Trina's house and um so that's what we did I gave her I gave him to Trina someone was asking me about the story on that doll and that is what it was and the thing is is that even though he was spirited and we brought him home I couldn't get his name. It was Trina and my oldest son that figured out his name. So he was probably always supposed to go to Trina anyway. Things that I've noticed with dolls that when they're spirited that you will find that their face expressions change. And which is crazy because either they're made out of porcelain, cloth, or plastic and there's no way for their face to change but it does. When they're spirited their face expressions will change. You'll see when they're mad, when they're sad, when they're happy. It's um... It's a pretty cool experience whenever I see that. They um, move, and someone asked me too, how do I know that they're um, 
how do I communicate with them? Just like when Molly didn't want to be on camera, they asked if I hear them. Molly, I actually like hear as me talking to you. Sarah, I can hear that way too. Beth, the other dolls, it's more of um, a mind talking where I can hear them talking in my head. And some of the spirits that are with these little girl dolls are actually grown people inside these dolls. So you hear their voices. So it just depends on the spirit and how they want to communicate with you and how open you are to the communication. Whenever you have an item that spirits it, not a, not a doll, but like an item, like if you had an item like this was spirited or this incense burner was spirited, I find I'm not as comfortable around those kind of spiritual, spirit, spiritual situations only because I feel they can be more sneaky. And I don't know, those are the kind of things that I clean. Objects and stuff like that, I will cleanse them to not let the spirit stay. I don't quite know how to explain it without it sounding like I'm just being mean to the ones that aren't showing themselves. But I guess I kind of am because I want to know who's around my family, you know, who's around my kids, who's in my house, who's around my dogs when I'm at work. I need to know who the spirits are, just like I need to know the people who come and visit me. So if they're just haunting an object and not letting me see them, then I will uh, get rid of them. The the rocking chair that is spirits that we already know who's haunting it or who has attached herself to it, and I'm okay with that because um, she's letting me see her. She has let me see her, so that didn't make sense. She has let me see her, so. I'm okay with her being here. As long as I can see who they are and know they're not hiding anything, then I'm okay with it. I just find that if they're haunting an object, I feel like they're just not as open. And if you're going to be in my house around my family, then you're going to have to be open because you're a guest here. So, and that goes the same. I mean, just because they're not living, it doesn't mean the rules don't apply to them. A big way for you to find out, like if you're out and about and you find um, spirited items, is learning your energy, feeling your own energy. That way you can tap into how to feel things out. You know, you can feel an energy if it's hot, if it's cold, if it's a boy, if it's a girl. And by doing so, you're, you're also going to be able to um, know if it's a good energy, if it's a bad energy, if you're in a store and you find a spirit at all. You know, these kind of things. It's all about learning your energy. It all goes together. Your magic goes with it and it goes also with your spiritual activity, learning the energy that you radiate and that you can control and feel the energy around you will be a huge help in that. At least that's my opinion. I like Sarah. I think she's cool. <laughs> I love how open she is because I'm, I'm very much open and she's very open to people seeing her and it's just um, let me tell you a story the other day. We were out. We went to Six Flags two Fridays ago. And um, we have cameras all over the house so that we can see what's going on in the house when um, we're gone. And I was looking at the camera in this room where Beth was. And my son was looking at the camera where Sarah was. The dogs were barking and going crazy. And we could see it. And we were like still 15 minutes from the house. And we're like, oh my goodness. So we're looking at all the cameras because we have them facing the front. We have them facing the back. We have them in the living rooms, we have them in the garage. And um, so we're watching to see what's going on, what are, what's going on with the dogs. Well, we didn't see who it was, but there was clearly someone in our driveway. And by them being in the driveway, it set off these two dolls, Beth and Sarah. Sarah's chair usually faces catty corner in this room, her rocking chair. It faces this way, that way she can see out the window and see the whole room. And her chair, while we're watching, is turning to look directly out the window. Like, on camera, we're watching this. And Sarah is usually on the fireplace at the edge, facing the living room this way. You're facing this way, and the door is that way. Sarah turns to look at the front door. So I was that was, that was pretty cool. We're like, not only do you have to come across... Coming into a witch's house means you're already fucked up anyway. But you are coming into a, dog, a house full of dogs that will eat your face. And spirits that will also make you regret coming into this witch's house. So it was pretty cool. I feel pretty secure in my house. Which, when we moved over here, we're not at the corner. There's another house on the side of us. We have a house behind us and a house in front of us and a house over here. So we're kind of like in the middle of a diamond. And 
within a couple weeks after we moved here, every house around us had got broken into. Some worse than others. This guy across the street actually walked in on it while it was happening, which was scary. Next door to us, over here, and back there are people on the other side of our fence that we don't ever even talk to, but they told us about it. Because, of course, we're the new ones in the neighborhood, and all of a sudden everybody's getting broken into. But we don't get broken into, so I'm pretty sure that people were thinking stupid thoughts. But um, we didn't get broken into. It went all the way around us. And that has to do with the magics. It has to do with the dogs. And it has to do with the spirits that are here. I have no doubt about that. And watching them that day turn toward the front to where someone was just confirmed my theories and the fact that the spirits that are here, they're treated kindly and they will also protect this as their home. And that's what they do. And then someone asked also, how does my husband deal with spirits? He doesn't like to deal with them. He knows and he he respects them. I've seen him speak to Beth and Sarah. He doesn't really talk to Molly, but Molly doesn't really like anybody. But she's still a good spirit. She doesn't do anything to cause harm to anybody and me and her are cool so we're fine. Um, he doesn't really like it. He has been held on he has been held down in bed before with a spirit that I used to work with and she would laugh in his face and he didn't like that to happen to him twice and he's been you know he's been messed with. And I think they mess with them because they know that he's scared. I think they know that he's gotten used to things through the years and he's gotten a lot braver than he used to be but he's not that husband that will go to a cemetery with me or go somewhere where there is a spiritual activity at that you know if I want to go and do some spirit hunting or whatever um, that sounded bad didn't it because I don't hunt them I just go there to see if I can find anybody to communicate it's not like I'm hunting them down but he wouldn't do anything like that that's not um, you know that I think that being raised Catholic and those things are, are shown to be evil is not exactly still part of his mentality, but I think they still scare him a little bit. I think they still scare him a little bit. So. It would be really cool is if somebody knows something of a um, a spiritual doll hangout or something, because I don't really have a lot of people to communicate with with these things that have um, been part of that type of lifestyle. So. It would be fun if any of you guys know of a hangout or not so much a Facebook group because I don't get a lot out of Facebook groups because so many people are in there and it's just, it's just not the same as being in a, like a Google hangout or something where you're able to talk to people. That's what I'm looking for is um, some kind of a hangout where people are doing spiritual doll hangouts to discuss you know their dolls and that sort of thing. I would love to be a part of that. Um, I've been doing a few Google hangouts with people here and there. I've been making more time to do stuff like that and um, I'm enjoying myself so if you know of any please let me know give me an invite I would really enjoy that I think also um, I'm reading all the questions I wrote them all down this one um, asked they wanted to know Beth's story Beth was already spirited when I bought her she we were at a oh I'm sorry she was at a um, antique shop that I was at and we were in there and me and my oldest son were kind of just drawn to this one cubby hole where they had stuff at and then there was Beth sitting there with her beautiful hair and just practically latched onto us and so we took her, I carried her around with me a little bit and then we, we got her, we took her in the car, we buckled her in a seat belt because she's a big doll and I didn't want her to get damaged in the process of going home because she's porcelain all the way through. And we're in the car and she lets us know that she would like a rocking chair. A rocking chair of her very own. So we went to another store and we actually found a rocking chair right when we walked in. And so we purchased her her own rocking chair, which she has. And she was with us for probably a good year before she asked for anything. And then she, was, she informed us that she was lonely and that she'd like to have another doll to accompany her. And so, um, and she kind of communicates with me and my oldest son. So we went out to one store and I didn't find anything that I was drawn to, you know, and I wasn't feeling anything. And then we went to another store and I found a porcelain baby doll. It's a little baby. And it wasn't in the cabinet with all the other porcelain dolls that had been thrown up with the toys. I can't stand when I see dolls just mistreated. I'm not a doll person, but you know that some of them are spirited. It's like, why do you treat them that way? But I guess they don't know. I'm not going to rant about it. Um, so I found this little doll 
that was just, it's an infant, it's a, not an infant, like a newborn baby, and we brought it home. My son said he felt something with it. I still don't feel nothing with it. The only thing that I saw the first day is that it looked like it was a frowny, like a boo-boo lip. And by the next day, and it's in Sarah's, I mean, it's, oh, I'm sorry. It's in Beth's lap and has had a smile ever since. So there is a spirit attached to it, obviously, because it's making changes. But it, and I say it because I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, hasn't shown itself to be yet. But my son is comfortable with it. So that's good enough for me because I trust his judgment on those kind of things. Yeah, the only other question I have here is about stuffed animals. But that's just like items. Stuffed animals can be spirited just like items. Anything can be spirited. A spirit can attach itself to a person. It can attach itself to a tapestry. It can attach itself to a spirit board. It can attach itself to anything. Um, so yes, definitely stuffed animals can also be spirited as well. And you know, the thing is with stuffed animals, a lot of times kids are attached to them. They hug them and give them so much love that these lost spirits, they want to be attached to something like that. And they want to feel that kind of love and attention. So for me, um, a, a spirited stuffed animal wouldn't be uncommon because it would make perfect sense to me. So yeah, I think that's all I got for this uh, part two to the haunted dolls. And I just wanted to have Sarah here. So yeah, I just wanted to have Sarah here with me and um, yeah, that's it. So please, if you have any stories that you'd like to share, you know, or if you do know of a hangout that discuss spirited dolls, please invite me. I will come. Um, I'd enjoy it. I, I would enjoy talking to other like-minded people about things that we all go through that are similar. So, Alright, well Sarah is being very active over here. She's almost giving me a headache. So I am going to end this video now. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you at the next video, and as always, blessed be.